Hi everyone. So let me start this video by first introducing myself. This is Ashnat Kothari here. I am a qualified associate actually. I have cleared 14 actual exams out of the possible 15 and have cleared all of these in the first attempt. I have also secured all India rank in two papers, CT6 and SP5. I have been teaching for you know more than seven years now. Uh, started when I was second year in my college. On the professional work front, uh, corporate side, I have experience of working in PNC insurance sector. I had previously worked with AXA Excel. I'm a graduate in economic honors, and I also was the BSc department topper in my college uh, from Calcutta University. So that was a brief introduction for ones who are watching our video for the first time. So in this particular video, we are going to be discussing the tentative solutions for CM1 paper A which had come in IFOA April 2023 session. Now, before we get started discussion of the paper, let me just inform all of you that the new live batches for IFOA September 2023 and IIA November 2023 session is starting from May 7. Admissions are open for it. Do keep in mind, you just have one single batch for each term for each exam. Classes will be available in live online mode, in live offline, Currently, our offline center is in Kolkata and in pre-recorded mode as well. All the students who join us do get a chance or rather do get access, complete access to all the pre-recorded content. And along with that, they have the option to attend the live classes either in offline or online form, whichever is convenient for them as per their availability. We would be creating study groups wherein we share the weekly tasks to ensure that all students be it ones who are currently studying in the college, be it ones who are working, have something of a target, you know, so that they can plan their studies accordingly and they always have the constant push or let's say external motivation to be regular with their preparation. Now, as for the mode of our classes, most of our life classes would be on the weekends. That will ensure that students, whether working, not working in college, can attend the life classes and the timings does not clash. There would be certain live classes or on weekdays as well, primarily in the initial stages to ensure that preparation, uh, that syllabus is being covered at a good pace. We intend to complete the syllabus from our part around first week of May itself. So basically from 7th May to 7th August is what we are targeting right now. Now the focus of the live classes is basically to ensure that the students studying for a particular paper in a particular batch have all the adequate concepts. It could be that we are teaching primarily in a particular session for a paper, paper A concepts. It could be paper B concepts. It could be question solving, doubt clearing. Point is wherever the students who are studying from us in a particular session are facing issues in, the live classes would be, you know, focusing on them so that these, uh, you know, concerns or these doubts, queries are resolved and we can Make sure that a student has a pretty good learning experience, not just from exam clearing point of view, but also from the point of view of being able to understand the concepts and the ability to apply them in the ever changing, you know, real world scenarios. We always motivate students or we always push students to start early. I personally feel that starting early is one of the most underrated things uh, in the eyes of others, but something which is extremely impactful. To promote that, we are having attractive early bird offers for ones who are enrolling for the classes by April end. These are customized on an individual basis depending on which papers they have cleared, which papers they are planning to give. So in case you are planning to start your preparation under our guidance, do join us today for a meaningful, impactful and wonderful learning experience. Overall, this term CS2 paper A, students had found it to be difficult. Uh, and the number of questions were pretty less eight and the topics tested were also you know, pretty less three questions coming from Markov topics, uh, two questions coming from time series, one question from modality projection, which uh, students usually do not expect and hasn't been uh, that frequently tested and the proportion of marks also allotted for it was pretty more related to the past years. So overall, uh, students have found this paper A to be difficult as well. In fact, even paper B this time, they found it to be lengthy. Other else, uh, they tend to score more marks in paper B out, or, you know, rather than paper A in CS2. 
So one thing which uh, all you all should understand is the way to prepare for CS2 is pretty different compared to other papers. This paper is extremely application based in nature. So the usual method of just, you know, taking a look at various past questions, going through the solutions that really doesn't help. You definitely need to go through a variety of past questions, variety of new questions, but you should be spending time to solve it yourself, you know, without referring to the solution. That is one thing where, you know, consistently students tend to struggle. Partly because the earlier exams they might have given, they would have you know, passed, scored pretty well using this technique. But CS2 is an extremely application based paper. It's not that, uh, you know, you can just practice the past year questions and replicate that. There would be a higher proportion of questions testing your ability to apply, you know, whatever concepts of learned to a new situation during the exam itself. Now, please do, uh, do note in mind in case you come up with, uh, you feel that the solutions which you have shared is uh, not completely correct or in case there are any computational or calculation errors, do let us know through the comments section. We'll go through them in case we find merit in those. We'll be pushing in the rectifications and whatever rectifications are there would be posted through us in the comments and that would be pinned. So the ones who are watching this particular video, do take a look at the pinned comments as well, just to see in case any you know, rectifications has been pushed in. Also do subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel so that you do get updated when the paper B part is also released. And apart from that, all other educational content, which we you know, keep sharing, you are timely updated regarding same as well. In case you find this particular video, uh, don't forget to you know like this one. And for any further queries you might have related to this particular question paper, feel free to comment. Starting with the first question, Markov chain classic case when you had to apply. So far, I don't know any student who has been able to solve it yet. Uh, I would be you know, just uh, highlighting the final solution. There will be a separate video specifically for this question mark where I will be in detail explaining how the transition probability matrix has been derived. For the timing, this is just the answer for reference. Probability xt plus 1 equal to a plus 1 given xt equal to a. So the state space over here, first of all, is 0, 1, 2, 3, so on till n. And the Markov chain is in fact irreducible as well. So this is coming out to be n minus a whole square by n square, then 2a into n minus a by n square, and finally a square by n square. If we'll add all of them, this will be giving us one, which you know kind of makes it consistent as well. As for the part three, uh, we need, you know, given we need this particular probability. And it's coming out to be n minus 1 factorial whole square divided by n to the part twice n minus 1. So do, you know, subscribe again to our channel so that you are updated when we push uh, release the particular video where we would be discussing this particular question in detail. Moving forward to next question two, this is a relatively easier question. You could say from two-state Markov model. Uh, very rarely has questions come from this particular chapter in the recent years. So let's quickly glance through solution for same. This is the likelihood function. Then we have mu1, which is coming out to be 1 by 6. Mu2 is coming out to be 7 by 22. And variance, we're getting this particular expression. And part 4, this is the required probability. Most of the students I have interacted so far have, you know, performed pretty well in this particular question. Question 3, modality projection, again, uh, uh, one of those chapters which some of you might have skipped along with let's say machine learning or popular EVT because these are the new topics uh, which had been let's say you know introduced in uh, top of what was there and already in CT4 and CT6 as part of CS2 curriculum. So over here let's just take the numerical part. Part 3 I'm getting it to be 0 0.018676 and then part 4. So there are multiple steps involved. First, we need to estimate the value at 2019. Then we need to find, let's say, the variance or the standard error of k hat 2019 as well. Once we have that, we can find the confidence interval for k hat and consequently, we can find it for m72 as well. So this is the final answer we are getting 0 0.017244 and 0 0.017477. You'll find all these formulas in the material itself. So all of these are there. You, know, you just need to go through them. One of uh, some of you who haven't done it might find it completely new. But once you have gone through mortality projections, specifically from the acted material, it's very well uh, you know defined there. Next, moving to the fourth question again. This was a relatively more straightforward question. Yet uh, I have seen that students 
did struggle in part B, getting partial expressions correct, not the complete ones. So question four, this is my model, sick, fully recovered, recovered. What the required probability is, basically a person who is in the sick state, you know, basically goes to the fully recovered state. No timeline has been mentioned, so it could be any point of time. So P S is bar zero comma X, somebody who is currently in the sick state continues to remain in the sick state. And then we make a transition to the fully recovered state. And then the time of transition could vary anytime between zero to infinite. And the weight first, we need to compute P S is zero bar X, which is what I've done over here. And finally, you substitute this in the above equation and you need to again solve it and we'll be getting the answer as 0 0.392156827. Moving forward to the next question, question five coming from time series. Part one was relatively straightforward, although it involved uh, quite a heavy calculation, especially for doing it on MS Word, it becomes uh, really tedious. Easier way I will say, you know, specifically just for this question is if you solve it on paper first and then maybe try to put it on board, that might have been easier else it would have been very clumsy if you would have tried to solve it directly on word itself. Again, ones who are comfortable, please do so. But I thought for this particular question, things might be a bit more easier overall if you do it on paper and then we take some additional time to just type it out again on MS Word itself. Part two is something once, uh, you know, this is directly a concept from CS1. Ones who do not recall it or uh, might have struggled. See, uh, you know, it's kind of assuming these exams that certain of your exams students have knowledge of those. So if somebody is starting with CS2, it's assumed that one has concepts of, you know, CS1 altogether. So you need to stay updated. And while studying for this paper, you have to revise certain concepts from CS1 as well. You never know when they might actually come. So part two was where, you know, most of them have struggled. So this is a tip. Let's take a look at part one, question five, part one. First, what I've done is found the, you know, the uh, population exp expression for, you know, the population autocorrelation function at lag one and two. So these are the final results, which I'm getting. And then row two by row one, I take, it's coming out to be a, if you divide those expressions, you get an a. So a comes out to be 0.5. You can substitute this, solve for it. You'll get two values of B in the question. It's given that modulus of B must be less than one. So it's basically this particular root, which we take, which is two minus root three. Part two, we need to basically now test whether B is zero or greater than zero. It's a one tail function. Some of them who did attempt that took it to be two tail. They took a wrong point, 1.96 instead of 1.645. So there, uh, you know, they did make a silly mistake, I would say. So these are the computational values you could calculate from the calculator or any other tools as well. Whatever tools you use, do uh, prefer, preferably do mention it on the, in the answer script so that the examiner knows how these have been computed. I have used calculator to compute these. This comes out to be the expression. And here n comes out to be greater than or equal to 55.98. Remember that n is data points. It should be integer. So this value should be 56. It's not rounding off. Had this been even 56.01, the answer would have been 57 then. Because we want n greater than or equal to 56.01. Next integer value is nothing but 57 only. So this was question five. Next question six, which you could say was from extreme value theory. So this was a relatively straightforward question. I would say, let's take at the numerical parts, part one, mean is mu. So the parameter must be one by mu. And there we are getting the value of mu as nothing but 9.9787456. Next part is the expectation of the threshold exceedance. Now there's a property it's there given in the acted material as well, that in case of X following exponential distribution, this X minus U given X is greater than U. This also follows nothing but exponential itself. So this comes out to be the answer. And in part three, we have been asked to use a GPT distribution. So this is the usual form of CDA. You can relate to the, what is there in the actual tables or directly use the result. This is nothing but a distribution of a Pareto with parameters gamma, comma, gamma, beta. Now beta is nothing but given to be one. So expectation X, you can refer from tables for Pareto. It's nothing but alpha uh, lambda by alpha minus one. So over here, once you solve, we'll get this particular value of gamma.
so most of them have you know done well in the earlier parts some of them did make some certain silly mistakes in part 3 or rather part 4 question 7 kaplan muir again this was also a question which was relatively well performed now do keep in mind depending on the assumptions you are stating the final answer could change right so the focus is on your assumptions when are you assuming the censoring to take place now if we'll take a look at the question the structure is that a new training program is there only once you clear a particular week's program you are eligible to arrive on the next day and again you know compete in it so if 10 people are eligible to arrive in the next week supposedly and four do not turn out so effectively six are only starting with it so censoring is something or rather should i say over here eligible but do not arrive this is censoring which is occurring just at the starting of the day so when you're computing n you'll have to subtract censoring usually the cases which we have studied you know most of you through material past your questions we assume censoring is the second decrement of interest and you might say that you know censoring will happen later but here the decrement happens when the competition starts right the climbing starts before climbing only less people turn out in that case censoring has taken place before you know that uh let's say climbing activity for the particular week has started so this was the solution which i'm getting the image is slightly in clear i'll just read out quickly so there are different points of time one two three five six seven eight nine at which uh you know decrement of interest which is arrive but fail to complete the climb you will see at time four one of them is failing so we haven't included time four nj 2019 16 now this 16 how uh 16 14 9 so you might be wondering how i'm getting this 16 over here because 19 minus 2 is 70 because one of them didn't turn off so 17 minus 1 16 similarly from 14 i'm getting 9 because one didn't complete so it becomes ineligible 13 are left and four of them do not turn up itself. So only nine are starting to climb on that particular day. And then in the last column, I have nothing but the survival function ST. These are the particular values. And finally, uh, the question had asked, which is, I guess, part of uh, this rescue service would like to recruit 30% of the volunteers who start the program. So we need to see the point at which ST or FT, whichever you're starting with ST tends to decrease, FT tends to increase. So the point after which we observe 30% or less than that will be the required number. So that is happening here in case of nine weeks where this ratio is coming out to be slightly less than 30%. At eight weeks, it's slightly more than 30%. So the moment 30% is crossed, we need to consider that particular value. Next question eight, this was a typical time series question. Most of the students have performed well in this question. Let's quickly take a solution at this. It's nothing but an AR2 process. In general, rho t is nothing but alpha to the power k by 2 for, you know, even integers, even positive integers, shall I say, or even non-negative integers, zero sum of you might think, not the positive or negative, whichever you want to interpret. And it takes the value zero in case of positive or integers. So this was the over overall paper. Uh, I hope that uh, this video was useful to all of you. We would be soon releasing the paper B solutions discussion video as well for CS2. Thank you.